Scripture memory verse. Anybody? I've got to read it. Okay, you want to read it? Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Matthew 10, 32 and 33. Thanks, Ray. Anybody else? Matthew 10, 32 through 33. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men, him will I also confess before my Father, which is in heaven. But whoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Matthew 10. 32 through 33. Good job. Anybody else? It's a little long, and we're going to spend another week at least on it. We haven't really been able to get to it, but um, sometimes uh, even the long scriptures are kind of easy to memorize if you just, um, the only real difference in the scripture is either confessing or denying in the two lines. It's really the only difference. Uh, if there's a confession, confessing him before uh, the Father, he will, he will also confess him be you before the Father. If you deny him before the Father, he will also deny you. So it's it's really not that hard to memorize it, even though it seems excuse me, it seems like it's longer. But it's it's confessing before men, he'll confess you before the Father. Deny before men, he'll deny you before the Father. So what we do here on earth is also going to be reflected in heavenly places. Uh, by Christ. And so it's a pretty amazing verse, but it's how thus a Christian should live. How someone who believes in Jesus, our, our words, our actions, our deeds, the way that we, 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 who we trust in is part of what we're confessing. You know, where we run to for help is part of what we confess. It's part of what we trust in. And so we need to understand these things when we're thinking that we're, you know, that we're Christians. I was listening to somebody, I don't know who he was, but you know, some people say that they believe in Jesus, and it's a, it's, it's a very important thing to believe in him. Um, you can't be saved without it, but the demons also believe in him, but they don't obey him. They don't listen to him. And so the, the preacher was talking about that, and he says, so a lot of people have demon faith. The same faith as a demon has. I, I thought, wow, that's pretty peculiar, but it sounds true. And, and, and it's a lot of people that say, I believe in Jesus. Well, what do you believe about him? How does it change your life? Where does it move you to? What are your actions about? Because you've confessed Christ to men. And then he confesses you before the Father in heaven. But if we deny him before men, he will also deny us before the Father who is in heaven. So, so what is going on in our lives with that? Because to confess means, uh, in the, in the uh, Greek, it means to covenant with or to acknowledge. Uh, it, it actually is from a word that means to agree to agree with the same set of facts in the same place at the same time. Because it's a wedding ceremony. Where, as Romans 10, 9, and 10 says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart one believes unto salvation, or excuse me, unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So there's the same thing going on there is this confession. I agree that Jesus is Lord, but it changes your life. And then your actions can also deny him by what you, the word deny means contradict. It means to reject or refuse him. And so by what we do say or how we live can be a contradiction in who we are professing as Lord. Even though we might say a prayer and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins, come into my heart. Does it really mean that we accepted that he was Savior and that he bought us with his blood? I was talking to a young man today and I said, uh, you know, you bought that car the other day. I said, what if you would have went to get in it and start it up and drive away? And the guy said, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. I still want to drive that. He's like, wait a minute. I just bought it. No, I still want to drive that. 
But I bought that. I still want to drive that. I want to do what I want to do. I don't care if you bought it. See, and that's what it is. Christ, when you agree, Christ purchased us. He purchased our lives with his blood. He ransomed us. He set us free. And yet we turn around and say, no, 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 Lord, I believe that. But I don't want you to drive this. I don't want you to live this. I don't want you to take control of this. I don't want to do what you want me to do. I want to keep doing what I want to do. And so our actions, our words, yes, but our actions. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do what I do, Jesus said. So we begin to move our hearts toward doing what God has called us to do. We begin to learn what it means to follow Jesus, to live as citizens in heaven. But we have to surrender in a way where the teacher, the Holy Spirit, who is leading us, can begin to shape us and conform us into the image of the living God. But if we just say a prayer and say, I confess it, is it demon ascension? Is it demon belief that we believe in Jesus? And now listen, it's got to be understood this way. It's not a one-time confession, and it's not a one-time denial, okay? Remember, um, we talked about this, I think, the last time we looked at this verse, but Peter denied Christ three times, but he didn't stay there. He was, it, with loving hands, restored back to because he repented of. And so that's the thing is, what, do we repent? And that means to turn from our denial with our actions, to continue to turn from our denial with our words, to continue to turn from when we see that our heart is in a way living that rejects what is life. It rejects to choose life because Christ is life. And it's the same thing with, um, it's not a one-time prayer. And we can point to Judas in that. Judas effectively was following Christ effectively was was believing in Christ, effectively had demon faith anyway, and, and then all of a sudden he's no longer there and he's the only one lost, the son of perdition. So it wasn't just a, I'm following right now. It's a continuing to be changed by the Spirit of God into the image of God for the glory of God until we finish the race and cross the finish line. And I'm not saying if you get close to the finish line and all of a sudden you go, you just lose your salvation. But our heart has to be moving in the direction of being conformed to the image of the living God. And the devil can deceive us into thinking we're okay when we really have just demon faith. Just demon faith. We don't want to, you know, and I encourage this young man today. I said, listen, you might think that I'm a little radical in what I'm telling you. You might think I'm a little legalist. You might think, oh boy, you're just pushing the envelope because at my church they tell me that I'm free and I have grace and I can do whatever I want and it's okay because I said a prayer. I said, guess what? You might look at me. You might look at them. You better look at the Bible and ask Jesus. You better ask God what the Bible says about your faith because if you die where you're at and it's not what Jesus says, then you've been duped by the devil. And that's the most important thing is to begin to draw near to God. Yes, it's a simple childlike faith. Yes, it's a simple belief in his death, burial, and resurrection. But is it demon faith that we have? That we really have a heart that wants to go follow him. And that's childlike faith, to be dependent upon him. And we're going to talk about that in our lesson tonight. So anybody else? Matthew 10, 32 and 33. Go ahead and try. Matthew 10, 32, and 33. Is that what you said? Did yes, ma'am. Right? Okay. Therefore, whoever confesses me before the Father... Before men. Oh, before men. He, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But he who... Denies me before the Father, or before, before men. men. He I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Matthew 10, 32 through 33. Yes, ma'am. That's good. Mm -hmm. I'm still and again, it's, it's, it, <laughs> if you want to memorize it, it it's because it's, we're down here. We're down here, and, uh, you know, the the first place that we're confessing or denying 
is in our horizontal relationships, by, by how we speak and how we, 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 we live, our actions. And, it, and then the second place is looking up. Where is Christ at? He's seated at the right hand of the throne in heaven. And he's going, if we confess down here uh, before men, then he'll confess up there to the Father. And then if we deny down here before men, then he's going to deny up there. So the power is released for our lives as how we live down here. I mean, so because if he's up there confessing, hey, he's mine, she's mine. Hey, there's going to be the angels. There's going to be power released for you to live your life to continue to grow. But, again, vice versa. So it's, it, it is a lifestyle. And confessing um, is agreeing. Not just with at one place at one time, but all the truth of the gospel. Beginning to learn that. Anybody else? 